the county of Essex just off its southeast coast, approximately seven miles from the historical town of Colchester. The island is joined to the mainland by a man-made road known as the Strood, which was constructed in Roman times. This road floods at certain high tides, completely cutting off the island from the mainland. Many people try to run the Strood whilst in flood, but as this 1923 photograph shows, not all are successful. This photograph, taken in 1900, shows a barge loaded with straw for London. The cut beside the strood where the barges were loaded is still visible today, although the access to the sea has been closed off. Rather pleasant looking village store in East Mersey has changed somewhat from the original purpose for which it was built. If we look at it from the other direction, we can see that it was once the East Mersey schoolhouse and hall, as in this photograph taken in 1910. This 1925 photograph of thatched cottages in East Road, East Mersey, shows that they have retained the basic form of the old building. This imposing building is the Dog and Pheasant in East Mersey. The smaller building to the right is of interest. This 1906 photograph of the old Dog and Pheasant built in 1705, shows how the establishment started. This dormer bungalow was once the clubhouse for East Mersey Golf Club, which was closed and sold off in 1950. What a different story it would be today. Mill Road has changed little since this 1932 photograph. Cornerways on the junction of Coast Road and the Lane in this 1908 photograph is at its full three storeys. It was later reduced in height to stop it falling over. The White Hart Hotel in High Street has changed little since 1932. The 1906 photograph of the West Mersey schools and schoolhouse show they have changed little in shape, although the old junior school is now used as a youth centre. The British Legion Hall has lost some of its imposing looks since it was completed in 1924 and here the builders are standing proudly on the steps. But then it probably had to so that it matched the new extension. A 1920 photograph taken in gowns of sails being stitched by hand and machine. The company is still in existence and is part of the Mersey tradition of shipbuilding and repair. This yacht is being built today to an 1890s design.
Apart from boats and boat building, these are what many people think of when you mention Mersey, although people from farther afield call them Colchester oysters. The oyster fisheries have shrunk from its heydays in the early years of the century. There are more derelict oyster beds now than there are in use. According to the sign on the shed, oysters were seven shillings for a hundred. But this is 1910. Sea fishing has also declined of late but still offers employment to many in the locality as the catch is dispatched to other markets as well as being sold locally. The company shed sells a wide range of both wet and shellfish. There has been a definite growth in yachts and yachting as a hobby in the area. Those who want to learn properly while still young are well catered for, all the lessons being supervised from a safety boat. The floating jetty at Mersey is a marvellous asset and can be used for purposes other than sailing. The houseboats are a unique feature of the hard at West Mersey. Some must be difficult to live in as they appear to be far from level. Mersey's use as a holiday resort has steadily increased. Many people from the surrounding area own beach huts on the island. It was very popular in the Edwardian era and in spite of a seaweed problem which seems to be a thing of the past. The only way there has been to reach the island is by boat or road. There has never been a rail link. Perhaps it was that short stretch of water that have, would have cost too much to bridge, which helps make the island unique. 